Today we will be exploring equilibrium constants through the solubility of borax. So to do that, we will be doing a couple titrations. So we've got a setup of ring stands, stir plates, some burette clamps, and of course some burettes, and some other pretty standard glassware that you'll find in your lab. The chemicals that we'll be using are 0.2 hydrochloric acid, bromyl cresol green dye indicator, and sodium tetraborate, also known as borax. So a little breakdown of today's experiment, we will be making a saturated solution of borax in 50 milliliters of deionized water. We're going to stir that for a bit and make sure we have some solid left over that will indicate our saturated solution. So here we have an equation of the borax in a water solution and it shows that the borax, also that known as the Na2B4OH4 octahydrate, is in solution with two moles of sodium ions and one mole of a borate ion in eight moles of water. So we're just going to go ahead and cross out those water molecules because we can do stuff like that. So the equation that's really important is right below that, that borax is in solution or equilibrium with two moles of sodium ions and one ion of borate. So we are going to put 10 milliliters of the borax solution into an Erlenmeyer flask and we're going to go ahead and titrate that with the 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid. The bromocresol green will also be in the solution to indicate when we have turned the solution acidic. So the equation to express that, the most simplified at the bottom and kind of the more complex one at the top, is saying that for one mole of borate ion and two moles of hydrochloric acid plus three moles of water, which is from our solution, we will be creating four moles of boric acid. So I went ahead and crossed out those spectator ions, the two moles of chlorine on the right side and the two moles of chlorine on the left and we're left with a simplified version of borate 2 minus, which is the borate ion, plus 2 moles of hydrogen ions, plus 3 moles of water, will be yielding 4 moles of boric acid. So that's pretty much the breakdown of our experiment there and our end goal there with the boric acid. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the setup of the experiment. I'm going to show you how to set up a titration here. In my hands I've got a burette clamp and it's for clamping your burette. So you're going to unwind the screw in the middle and slide the clamp down the ring stand and tighten it up a bit. And do the same thing on the other side. I'm actually setting up two titrations to save myself a little bit of time and make it a little bit easier on myself. So this is your burette, this is stopcock. You wanna make sure that's closed, otherwise all of your liquid will run through your burette and we don't want that to happen. And again, make sure the stopcock is closed and fix your burette into the clamp and then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and measure out the sodium tetraborate, also known as the borax. We're doing two titrations, one in room temperature and one in an ice bath, so I'm measuring out two portions of borax. It's going to be close to about three grams. I'm going to measure directly into the beaker for a couple reasons. One, because I'm kind of lazy and it saves me some steps. Two, because I want to save the lab materials and not use up a weigh boat or any weigh paper that you just throw away. And three, because it could be um, a source of error later on if you make a mistake in transferring. So here's the beaker for the ice bath solution, about three grams there. And I'm going to make an ice bath now. And the ice bath is about a one-to-one -one ratio of ice and water. So to the borax in the beakers, I am adding 
50 milliliters of deionized water to each. I also put a magnetic stir bar into each of these because we'll need that to stir up our solution. So one into an ice bath and the other one's just out in room temperature. We got those stirring and we can go ahead and start with some other prep work for this experiment while these are going. So notice that I've taken the burette off of the burette clamp and brought the burette in front of me. This is very intentional because you never want to add any chemicals or liquids above your head or at face level. This is because you can spill chemicals on your head or face and we really don't want that to happen. And it's just way easier to add any kind of chemical or liquid in front of you as opposed to above you. So I went ahead and rinsed that burette with the 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid and I'm going to go ahead and fill it up in preparation for our titration and I'll do the same on the other one. First things first, before I start any titration, I want to get an accurate reading of the initial volume on the burette and I'm definitely going to make sure that I record this. It's very important for the success of your experiment to make sure you get accurate readings on your burette before and after you do your titration. Alright, so I'm going to turn off the stirring and make sure that there's still some solid left in the beaker. And then I'm going to measure the temperature of both of the solutions and record those on my data sheet. So we're going to be using a volumetric pipette and for those of you who've never used one, they can be a little confusing because there's two lines at the top to fill to. So TC stands for to contain, which means the pipette can contain the volume that is marked on it but doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to deliver that because there will still be residual volume in the tip of the pipette. So you want to fill up to TD, which stands for to deliver. So that should deliver the desired amount to our flask. To use the volumetric pipette, you want to grab a pipette bulb and fully depress the bulb and place it on top of the pipette. As you release the bulb, you will slowly draw in a volume of liquid the volume will start to drop and you want to place your thumb over the pipette to stop it at the TD mark. It's kind of difficult for if you've never tried it before, it might take a bit of practice. So I'm going to fill up my volumetric pipette with 10 milliliters of the room temperature borax solution. And I'm going to deliver it into a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. I am also transferring the magnet out of the solution into the flask. So I'm going to do the same thing with the ice bath solution, drawing up the solution into the volumetric pipette, and that again is 10 milliliters. And I'm going to dispense that into my Erlenmeyer flask. Now I have the Bromo Cresol Green. I'm going to put a few drops of that into our flask. I think I did four in each. And then in goes 20 mils of deionized water into both of the flasks. And we're just about ready to start our titrations once I turn on the stirplets. So I'm going to do both titrations at the same time. I'm a little bit more experienced with titrations than a beginner would be. This will be a lot easier if you have a partner helping you. So I've got the room temperature solution going on the far side and the closest one is the ice bath. So what we're looking for is a change from that blue to a very pale, pretty yellow color. 
So I'm careful to only let a little bit of volume through at a time, less than a milliliter I would say, because you don't want to overshoot your titration. I noticed a color change here so I backed off and waited for that color to develop. I'm going to make sure the stopcock is fully closed and there it is. That's kind of what we're shooting for here. So I'm going to finish the room temperature titration. I'm going to add in drop by drop to make sure that I don't add too much volume of the hydrochloric acid. And there we go. And I'm going to make sure that I record the final burette readings for both of the titrations. And then we're going to repeat the experiment. So I actually didn't fill up the burettes any more than um, was already in them because I didn't really want to read the burette again. I just wanted to keep my data as streamlined as possible so I just kept my initial burette reading for titration number two at the volume of the final titration from number one. At the end of the video, I'll give you guys a breakdown of my data if you're interested. So I'm just preparing these solutions again, making sure I have the stir bar inside of the flasks. 10 mils of each solution, four drops of bromocrusol, and 20 milliliters of deionized water. And like I said, if you have a partner or someone else that you're working with, it'll be a little bit easier if you guys divvy up the work. One doing a room temperature titration and one doing the ice bath titration. Just popped a circuit, so we're back on. I'm just adding little volumes at a time, little, little volumes, and seeing if there's any color change at all. So the ice bath solution has completed its titration. It's yellow, and there we go. We got two yellow fellas, and we're gonna go ahead and read the last volume of the hydrochloric acid inside the burettes and make sure we record that on our data sheet for our calculations later on. Really don't want to mess up that step. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to clean your burette. Don't try to stick these under the sink. Trust me, it won't work and you really don't want to break one of these guys. So just empty the contents into a waste beaker, and then I've got a wash bottle with some DI water inside of it. I'm just rinsing it a few times. You can open the stopcock and let some of the water drain through, and then pour out the rest. And then make sure you keep the stopcock open so that it can dry out. And that's the basics of a titration. Thanks for watching, guys, and here's that data that I promised.